According to SAMHSA's National Survey on Drug Use and Health, approximately 20.3 million people above the age 12 suffer from substance use disorder. Incredible. The disease of addiction takes an average of 130 Americans every day. Sadly, the opioid crisis, which many consider the worst pandemic of our time, has been even further perpetuated by the spread of COVID-19. Since the start of the coronavirus outbreak, drug overdoses have increased by 18%. Factors like economic stress and social isolation have led to increased depression and unnecessary deaths. A Better Life Recovery is a premier addiction treatment center in Southern California, offering one of the most highly regarded and comprehensive addiction treatment programs in the United States. Dedicated to helping its clients achieve complete inner and outer transformation, they offer a 45 to 90 day program custom tailored to meet the needs of each individual client. Long term is the way to go. Many of A Better Life's clients elect to stay up to nine months to receive additional support. A Better Life Recovery will do whatever it takes for as long as it takes to ensure the success of every client. Are you ready for a better life? Go to abetterliferecovery.com or call 866-581-4401 now. Real talk. Headlines have become it's sickening. They've become poisonous. Dissecting headlines. Defying state orders. Sheriff Bianco not enforcing what the governor is saying. Dialed in with decision makers. Clarify what you actually meant. Get the answers you need. Beginning of this, we were told don't wear a mask. Is this really helping? Expect a different kind of newscast. Fox 11 News Special Report. Weeknights at 7. It's all about you and a dose of Dr. Drew. That's right, everybody. Thank you for being here. How about if I get in the chat room, too? Is your, where's your mic, honey buns? How about that? Let's bring a mic in, too. A mic and a chat room, and I'll be all ready to go. <laughs> Whoa. It's been a long day, I must tell you. So um, Somebody doesn't like my um, heading on, on uh, already? Facebook. Yeah, they don't like the fireside chat. But we are living in a very smoky Smoky place right now. Yeah, Pasadena is completely socked in. You've seen those pictures of San Francisco. Well, that, we're we're about seven miles as the crow flies from a major fire. So, but it is worse smoke. in certain areas. It's not supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be. About oh, so there. How to so, cope. oh, so I see. the The mine police is angry with you for trying to make a little bit of a quip. How dare you, Susan? I'm how sorry, dare I'm... you be lighthearted? How dare you? I'm very, yeah, sorry. It w- it wasn't supposed to be funny. It was just to be sort of political. I'd like to know how we're supposed to survive during a pandemic. Well, the other thing, so so those of us in California, which is the, uh, you know, the People's Republic of California, we are under lockdown all the time with our, go- our government uh, authoritarian leadership is constantly up our tush to tell us how to behave. And it's weird looking at when you look out and see the the orange, much the way you see those pictures of San Francisco yesterday, that's what we're looking at here. It um, sort of adds an interesting sort of tone to everything. It's really unpleasant. So, yeah. uh, It's hard to breathe already with the mask on. (laughs) Right. You can't breathe. You can't exercise. It it really is rough. So I mean, uh, people should stay inside, clearly, but... but Outdoor restaurants are going to be having more problems. They right. So I inside. talked to the L.A. County Sheriff yesterday, and I said, look, Sheriff, we have people. The health department is supposed to be responsible for the health, not for the COVID, the health. And will you commit to me, Sheriff, that you will not hassle people who move indoors in their restaurants to get out of this smoke, particularly if they have elderly clients? He said, of course, go inside. So we have a sheriff that's a reasonable person. Yeah, but you're not really allowed to do that. Yeah, you are. If if it's if you're under an un, un uh, what do they call it unincorporated area, and the sheriff is your boss, the sheriff said it live on television last oh, night really? that, that he will allow you to work out inside and to eat inside if the air quality is the way it is here in Pasadena. So yeah. that's worrying about your health. That he's trying to make a decision. As long as you wear the mask and you distance, and you do the smart things indoors. Fine, fine. Uh, mm-hmm. Alana wants us all to come to Scotland. To Scotland. Where in Scotland are you, Alana? I'm curious. That's a good idea. Uh, Ashley, can we talk to the health department? Uh, yes. Okay. So Ashley, um, wants to talk about the, uh, head of our health department here in Los Angeles getting caught in a co- phone conversation was asked about when we can open schools. And she said, well, let's get through the election. Then after the election, she didn't just say that she said, let's wait till we're done with the election as though she's 
doing something, that, that this is doing something in the election. It was anathema. It was irresponsible. She needs to open schools now. What is it about November? Now. Yeah, open them now. That was a whoopsie. That, that was not a whoopsie. That was unconscionable. And so she was busy doing something until the election, i.e. maintaining our lockdown in California to do what? To do what, my dear? Very disappointing statement. So there you go. That's you got to pay careful attention to people's words. Mm -hmm. We're not done with the election yet. I haven't done what I need to do with the election. Then I can let your kids return to school. That is a certain that <laughs> I, we've been around the country, Susan and I Stop have. Stop politicizing and, medicine. And I am telling you, we are. It is different here in California than every other state we've been to, including New York, who was quite welcoming and quite encouraging compared to this. Really something else. I know. Uh, what was the adverse effect on the AstraZeneca vaccine? I heard a rumor. I have not read this, so I don't have this confirmed. But I had a, heard a rumor. It was something called transverse myelitis, which is an inflammatory attack on the brainstem. It's not a good thing. And it is a known, uh, it's a known side effect of, of uh, vaccines. So I'm fearful that that's what it is. Hopefully not, but it might be. It might be. Uh, church is moving inside here in Central Valley. Good for you. Good for you. Um Let's see. Thank, we're safe from the fires. Don't worry about safety. That we're fine. I mean, for that for those fires well, that are seven for miles. The time being. <laughs> well, we could have a separate fire, but but for those fires that are seven miles away, they'd have to literally burn through three cities to get to us, and that's of course never happened before. And there's no doesn't. wind. There's no wind, so it's not. Yeah, gonna thank God. They keep saying there's going to be big wind, but there's not. No wind. No wind. Uh, do I have any thoughts on the Braden Kaiden hypothesis, Rory? Uh, Doctor Yo and I talked about it yesterday. You should consult that stream. Uh, I do believe the brainokinin system is involved in the activation of the cytokine storm. It, when Dr. Yo and I talked about it, it seemed a little too just so for me. Uh, in other words, to lay it all at the feet of bradykinin did not make sense to me. I tell you why it doesn't is because bradykinin is a system we alter all the time with medications we use, and you certainly don't see these massive responses or massive improvements with medicines we already use that modify the bradykinin system. So it already feels to me like a system that's not that powerful, though it may be, I may be wrong, uh, which, which is another thing about being wrong, I want you guys to understand. There are no headlines in medicine. You, you are watching med clinical medicine being done in real time during this epidemic, and the way it's done, this is how it's done. We train on cases, we learn, we learn some judgment on cases, we read broadly the literature of our field, the medical literature, the medical science. We read it, read it, read it. And then we go deep in certain areas. We're trained to analyze that literature. We're trained to go understand the landscape in which all the literature is published and then go deep in certain areas so we can contextualize that particular set of deeper literature, analyze it, arrive at a conclusion about that literature. Is it good? Is it bad? The conclusion it's making. Then come back and discuss it with our peers. We know we will encounter peers that have an alternative a pit position, and together or amongst ourselves, we'll reach a decision of how to move forward in the best interest of our patients. That's how we do it. There are no headlines. We just do it in this sort of ongoing collaborative fashion. So every time you see a headline and then you wonder why you see a different headline, that's how medicine is done. It's not meant for news headlines. Somebody said something to me yesterday, and they wanted to reported as a headline i said it's, it's, these aren't headlines you can't you can't do that anyway I, I'm, I'm busily trying to co coach up the news world on that any news on reports on the secondary infections could mean vaccines will be ineffective uh baby daddy i don't think there's anything much to that i wouldn't say there's not much to that uh thank you diane for the safe wishes why won't California prescribe a burn like florida uh flora may they need forestry because they won't do forestry care what you don't know is two things you don't know, that these fires, the smoke from these fires, undo all the environmental work we've done for the year. Undo it completely. So all the global warming initiatives in California have now been undone by fire. Undone, number one. Number two, the reason they're so out of control and so ubiquitous is lack of forestry management, which they have refused to do for the last 10 years. Welcome to California. Uh, Costs too much money. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, there's there's a ideology guiding it, as with everything that's a bad idea. So, I know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, medicine and politics. Tom Cigar, the worst, the worst, mm -hmm. the worst, the worst. 
Is overactive thyroid the same as hypertension? A lot, uh, Mac Matrix, absolutely not. Hyperten overactive thyroid is hyperthyroidism caused typically by Graves disease or something called Plummer's disease and hyperactive nodules. The hypertension is high blood pressure, and that's caused by a lot of different things. The typical hypertension is called essential hypertension, which is something that comes with aging and genetics, usually a miscommunication between the right atrium of the heart and the kidney that resets our pressure at a little higher level than it could should be, and when it does that, it damages blood vessels over time. That's all. You can also have narrowing of the arteries to the kidneys. You can have intrinsic kidney disease, other things that uh, induce hypertension as well. All right. Is it true that inhaling wild, wildfire smoke is tantamount to smoking a few packs of cigarettes? Mm, maybe in terms of irritation to the airways, but not in terms of carcinogenicity or heart disease. Uh, Oregon does it. Yeah. Uh, Kimberly, but Oregon does forestry management. Trust me, they do it up there. Uh, is the fires minus the pollution, not the fires plus the pollution, fake math news? Yeah, with no, Brian, what I said was we have, we have very intense initiatives in California to uh, address the environmental issues. What we have done from those environmental initiatives have been completely undone by the fires. So the lack of forestry management undoes our effect, our attempt to improve the uh, carbon footprint. I didn't know you knew so much about fire. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, Austrian bushfires in January. Yes, fires equal three years of car pollution. Jay, that's about right, I believe. Mm, thank you, GSR Savage. We want to be good therapy for you. Uh, so what do you guys want to talk about today? Have we hit most of the topics? Uh, mm, okay, here we go. Let's get to this. Uh, Rasmus, I have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Lymph uh, my doctor says that it should not kill me. Um, like, how is that possible when it's cancer? Uh, Rasmus, most cancer is curable. Most cancer in this country is curable. The only ones we have a bad time with is lung, colon, and pancreas, brain. Most are curable. Nearly all are treatable, meaning you can live with them for long periods of time. Large cell lymphomas are often curable. Small cell lymphomas you can often live with for long periods of time and are sometimes curable. So I'm guessing you have a large cell lymphoma that is highly amenable to treatment. Um, let's see. Climate change is fake. Uh, uh, this year's... Uh, mm. <laughs> fires are killing my asthma. Yep, I'm sure it oh, is. Oh, I know. My nose runs all day. Well, let me see. You I have a humidifier, though. It seems to help a lot. Hang on. Rasmus, did he say not Hodgkin's lymphoma or Hodgkin's lymphoma? Because Hodgkin's is actually even more treatable. Let me see. what he. Where did I lose him? Dr. John Campbell is being highly recommended. Good, I like that. Uh, where did you go? Oh, there it is. I have non Hodgkin lymphoma. Yeah. Uh, so, yep, treatable. You must have the treatable kind. My dad has leukemia. That's a very different diagnosis and treatment. So, Lindsay, you're saying your dad had leukemia. He died within months. So, what you're talking about is lymphocytic leukemia, which is uh, ALL, which is something that occurs in childhood and is curable, but when it occurs in adulthood, particularly later in life, it's very problematic. It can be treated, but the treatment is so rough that the older folks usually can't tolerate that. Uh, I'm not a huge Ativan fan chronically, my friend, you're asking about that. Uh, do I know Dr. Dre? I do not, though we are often weirdly <laughs> mixed up in the press and social media. Very funny. Uh, Non-Hodgkin's Rasmus says, it's a chronic, uh, 30 years old, he told me I should be able to live a long time. I had four rounds of chemo and antibody therapy from Denmark. Uh, yeah, so that must be the small cell lymphomas, and those are manageable. So well done. Uh, where are you in Denmark, Rasmus? I'm curious. And how did you happen into oh, our stream? Oh, yay, yeah. finally, we're getting international. Yeah, we do, want, we do want to bring in an international group if we can. We're just curious of what's going on well, around the world. Well, we're working on it with some people, and I just want to know. Justin, do I think uh, New York City is going to get a lot worse? I do not. I think, well, what do you mean by worse? I mean, in terms of COVID, no, I think it's over. In terms of economics, I'm worried about it. I think it's going to make it through, but it's really uh, problematic. Uh, Mom has small cell lung cancer. Yeah, small, any lung cancers are rough. They are really rough. But the adenocarcinomas are devastation. Let's let's be fair. Uh, does epilepsy make you compromised for COVID? No, not specifically. It does not. 
Yes, GSR. Let's do go worldwide. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to stop a half a milligram of Suboxone? Uh, Diane, I'm assuming you're, you're saying a, whole, a total dose of half a milligram a day. You should be able just to stop. You will have a two-week unpleasant withdrawal, and uh, that'll be that. You'll be through it. So just stop it. And by the way, at a half a milligram, if you want to just stay on it, it really doesn't affect you that much. Uh, Northern Denmark uh, got to know us from your mom's house. Well, thank you, Rasmus. We appreciate that. In fact, I'm going to be on your mom's house live next Friday. Those of you who are Mommies and Jeans fans, um, we will, I will be on the upcoming live your mom's house at 6 p.m. Well, it starts at 5 p.m. Pacific. I'll be on at 6 p.m. And it's going to be intense as far as I know. They were just telling me to, to gird my loins. So I shall do exactly yeah. that. Yeah. Is there any evidence cloth mask works against Corona? Um, uh, Ra Raquel, anything that interrupts droplet uh, spread will interfere with the virus transmission. I mean, that's the fact. If you, if you can prove that you're not getting droplets through, you, you're doing a good job of diminishing spread. Uh, going to a restaurant for the first time tomorrow, Andrew Ashkazvili. Man, I've been going regularly. Uh, support the businesses, spend spend liberally, tip liberally. These people need to make their living. It's so nice to get served uh, and have somebody clean up after you. We've been both indoors and outdoors. Uh, just keep your distance. Keep your mask on when you go to the bathroom. The only note we had is wear your mask in the bathroom. Yes. That bothered us when people go to the bathroom without their mask. Yeah, and also wash your hands and take your hand sanitizer. And Mark, is it true that 30 and 40-year-olds are dying from COVID-19? Uh, of course people die of COVID-19. It's a devastating illness. The probability of dying at 30 or 40 years of age, I believe Lower. is less than 0.1%. Uh, I may be wrong on that. I could look that up. Let's look, let's look up. Susan, if, if you, did, you, do you, you watched put, yesterday's show, you see people that are older than 40 can. can yeah, but, but Susan, can you put up death, uh, COVID death by age group, maybe CDC oh data? God. Yeah, yeah, come on. I'm working uh, on this. Well, give me a minute. How many years from now do you see us going back to normal? No masks? Um, the springtime, probably, let's be fair, to be completely normal. Um, but I'm hoping we can get something going in the fall. School's open for five weeks, Ashley. No cases, wear masks, stay with the same students and teachers. Yeah, good. Um, oh, yeah, Kelly Gallagher, great point. I mean, it drives me That's the other thing that drives me crazy. You'll see out there people wearing masks, not wearing a mask. So be very careful. Uh, Knox, I did, um, I did comment on doc, on Dr. Farrar's comments and I am, uh, mortified by what she was saying. And, and let me refine what you're seeing in the press. I'll say it again. She didn't just say we have to finish with the election. She had to say, wait till we're done with the election as though she's doing something with the election. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They need to open the schools now. Knox, how's your trumpet plan going? All right. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay, here's the COVID death by ages. So, hey, oh, wait. How uh, you, we need to say percentage death. Uh, per, put, put percentile death, maybe. So In any event, uh, someone's asking a question. Oh, Joseph, Joe, if you ask a question, are people are touching their face much more. I get the mask, but if we're touching our face, does it spread that way? Joseph, COVID not spread on your hands, turns out, or not primarily or nearly at all spread on your hands. Good idea to wash your hands. There could be some spread that way. Turns out messing with your mask does not spread COVID. It will spread influenza. So that's why you've got to get your influenza vaccine. I am very worried about the mask having an adverse effect on influenza this year. So influenza is a virus transmitted on hands. COVID is not particularly. Will the vaccine be delayed because the AstraZeneca issue? Hard to say. Well, certainly will be for AstraZeneca, but will be for everybody else? I don't know. Uh, yeah, Tom's got your flu shot. I got it uh, two weeks ago right, or a week ago. If the Moore Act passes, can I mail order weed? Andy, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> mm. Do I suggest flu shots for kids too? I do, absolutely. I've uh, given, to my, given, to, given it to my kids forever. There are not masks littered all over the oceans and beaches. They tell me that's not true. Oh, the beach probably. Uh, Jay's, uh, it could be. <laughs> how do I exercise with the mask at the gym? I do it all the time, Raquel. I do it, in fact, I'm going to do it in a, in a half an hour to... Deal with the smoke. I mean, the smoke here locally is so terrible. Okay, you couldn't come up with that, Susan? Well, that, it, uh, I did, but... Percentage no, hold on. death I just have by to... age COVID. It's not like... COVID. Okay, let me try uh, this one. 
COVID-19 hospitalization death rate by age. Here's CDC. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm looking at. Um, yeah, it, uh, it has it by times higher risk of death. Uh, hospitalization, death, 10 times. Mm, so if you are... Here, look. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm looking at right now. I want the percentile death. It tells you like the percent. Yeah, the per that, that's how much higher... Uh, if you're 18 to 29, your, your risk is essentially, they're going to put that as average. and uh, That's not really a good way to say it. Mortality risk. Here we go. COVID-19. World data. Give me a second to pull it up if I can get it. Mm, country by country data. Oh, I don't want that. Okay. Coronavirus age. World metrics. Here we go. Uh, okay. What's so the, here's what's here, the website. Uh, world meters info. Um, I'll, let me send you the, I'll send you the link. No, oh, no. Oops. Okay. I won't, but you have to go to a certain page, which is age of coronavirus deaths. So here you go, everybody. Susan's going to put it up there. Oh, well, age of, <laughs> age of coronavirus deaths. So, uh, the, the share of deaths, if you're under 18, 0.06%. Mm. And you asked about 45 year olds. If you're 18 to 44, it is 3.9% of all deaths. Uh, 75 plus 48 percent 65 plus 24 percent so you see how if you are younger the probability of dying without particularly without risk factors is extremely remote extremely remote so it's why it's the flu in younger populations primarily Sorry, I um uh Jesse, I don't know why you say I don't answer Periscope questions. I've been answering them for the last half hour, so I'm confused by that. Perhaps you're not looking at the Periscope questions. Uh, or maybe I'm not getting all of them here. Uh, sorry about the smoke. Thank you. Uh, no. Weird. We're trapped in our house again. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's go back to what you Yeah, I can't find them. You can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I just went through it. it, it you, how do you find these graphs so easily? It's mm, crazy. Yeah. Temperate symptoms, incubation. Yeah. Ethical, ethical skeptics work. Uh, Andrew, I've not been really, I found him, but I've not really been watching his stuff. I'm, I'm always good with skeptics. I like to read their stuff and think about things as a result. So, uh, so I'm sure I will like his stuff. Uh, is there something he has said today? Do I agree with Dr. Fauci that we should hunker down? Uh, Kelly, I, I, we sh I still think we should listen to Fauci. He should still be your North Star. I'm not sure what he means by that, except to say sort of preparing us emotionally that it's not going to magically get better overnight. And, and the thing I'm here to tell you is something that Dr. Yo and I were talking about yesterday. This, we're going to be living with this, this virus for a long, long time. Now, most of us are going to have had it or be vaccinated at a certain point. But it's going to be around for years. And so to be so focused on case rates, that re that's not it. I know. I'm, I've got ca it. Case rates just show the amount of viral RNA in the environment. It doesn't really tell us who's sick, who's infectious. It, it's, a, it's the wrong metric. And it will always be up. It will always be higher than we'd like it to be because viral RNA is ubiquitous in the population. It's going to be in people's noses that don't have the infection, don't have the COVID, and we've got to adjust how we how we um, do that. Yes, I think GSR, Fauci is just encouraging us to, to uh, stay the course. I'm going to watch uh, what he said. Raquel, Dr. Offit said public measures should continue even with the vaccine. Yeah, yeah, of course. We should be um, being careful. Uh, but there's a flu, there's a flu uh, epidemic coming our way. You should be taking the vaccine. You should be careful with that. I mean, remember, these guys are infectious disease doctors. They're just focused on, on outbreaks of infectious disease. They're, they're not thinking about cancer and heart disease, which is, we also need to think okay, about. Okay, put the chart up so you can say it again. Yeah, so there you are. It so took me a while. Scroll that up a little bit. Um, share of deaths if you're under 17, 0.02%, right? Share of deaths if you're under 44, 0.8%. So you said, are there 30 and 40-year-olds dying of the virus? There you are. You Very have, small percentage. Less than 1%. Point 0.8. Less than 1%. So you have a 99.2% probability of not being a fatality. Wow. Uh, if you're under 65, 65 to 45, it's 3. It's 0.7. H1N1 was like what? 50% chance? At, well, at, at 45 to 64, you probably saw, it was probably about 8%. It was probably about 8% in that group. Really? Uh, I think so. For uh, H1N1? You can look it up. 
Same same data. No, I'm not doing it. Uh, 75 plus though, it's 15 percent. 85 plus. <laughs> is so you see how you get over 75. That's when it really becomes a problem. But yes, of course they're going to be. They're going to be deaths of three year olds. It's, got, it's the way we are. We're biological systems. Right. But it's going to be rare, 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 and we should not be destroying our lives worrying about that. By the way, you are much more likely to get depression and suicide than your child die of COVID. Hmm. Don't get mad. I don't know. Is be Adam nice Carolla going people. to shave more regularly? No, he will not. He will <laughs> no, nor will he take baths or use soap. He refuses to do so. Oh, God. He refuses. Uh, I've never smelled smelled him, though. He doesn't have any funk. That's not his thing, so it's easier for him. But he goes in the pool every day in the cold water. Okay. DNA results try one variant of a disease. Um, so, iron, so you have iron storage disease. You probably have hemochromatosis or hemosiderosis. Uh, and Josette, you have to be careful. That's all. Be careful with your iron metabolism. Do I believe uh, information that was out that began in 2020 could have anything to do done differently with low... Uh, Joseph, um, I think the one, there were two things I agree with in terms of, look, there was a fog of war at the beginning. Everybody got it wrong. Nancy Pelosi said we needed to go to Chinatown as this thing was coming on. I mean, everybody got it wrong. Dr. Fauci said, don't wear a mask. Everybody got something wrong. That's just the way it was at the beginning. Uh, two things we got right was travel ban and leaving it to local county local management. This needs to be managed by local county health officials. I absolutely agree with that. Whether or not those county officials do a good job, that's open for discussion. But I think to have a federal to have a federal plan in a country where some counties had zero COVID and some counties were having massive outbreaks, that makes no sense whatsoever. No sense. Um, Linda, I'm sorry you're afraid that's, of flu shots. You should take keep doing that? See if you can find the H1N one down on the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, you guys. I'm goofing around with this thing. Recommendation how to find a good emotionally focused therapy in New York City. It usually see whiz people will will advertise. You can look. Um, there is a society of EFT. I, I forget what it's called, but usually they will they will tell you that they, in their you know in their their commercial material that they are doing they do EFT. Yeah, Diana was wondering the same thing. Linda, what scares you about the influenza vaccine? I've been taking it, giving it to my family and thousands of my patients for years and years and years. I've seen one side effect, which was uh, facial swelling of the many tens of thousands of vaccines I've given out. Yeah. So uh, talk about your show yesterday with Dr. So Dr. Yo and I geeked out a bit. Um, two hours almost. We geeked out for almost two hours. Uh we were talking, ooh, SAMHSA just put out their 2019 National Survey on Drug Use and Health. Uh, that's <laughs> actually an important thing. Uh, it's, it's too bad that we don't have 2020 yet because it's going to be bad. Back to you. Um, so Dr. you and I were geeking out on um, on the COVID, on the, many other things, as you know, as usual, we're talking about the uh, Ranty system, but we interviewed two patients who had recovered from COVID-19. One was an anesthesiologist who was the longest, death experiences. Sur longest surviving uh, ICU patient with COVID and to make it out, he seemed great. And we talked to a young woman with liver disease who was a UCLA patient who got Lamab, who also barely recovered, but is now doing great. So, so we are learning to deal with this illness. We are getting people through it, even those that are quite critically ill. If you want to be scared to go out, watch our show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Illicit drug use. I've got the data now from SAMHSA. Uh, shocking, it's up. <laughs> up, up, up. Let me see methamphetamine, how bad that's up. That's up uh, 20%. Uh, psychotherapeutics up. Uh, that's, uh, that's down a little bit. Illicit drugs other than marijuana up uh, 20%. Everything's up, 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 up. Shocking, and that's 2019 data. Wait till you see the 2020 data. It's not going to be pretty. Okay, uh, can I do a show about fibromyalgia? You know, I, I'm not... Uh, I'm not sure how to do that because I, I you know, fibromyalgia is awful. Um, I, the, the majority of fibromyalgia patients have a sleep disturbance. And if you correct that sleep disorder, the fibromyalgia gets a lot better. So my common advice to fibromyalgia patients is talk to your doctor about getting a sleep evaluation and seeing what you can do to restore sleep because that has the highest probability of really helping you. 
And otherwise, it's just going to be a story about all the horror stories that everyone goes through uh, dealing with fibromyalgia and the medical system with fibromyalgia. It's not fun. It is not fun. Uh, okay. Uh, what's up with polio and what's it to do with Bill Gates? I'm not quite sure what you're asking, Justin, so I don't know. Um, Samuel got all the symptoms of coronavirus. They kept telling me to stay home. Dad, asthma on top of that afterwards. Yeah, but you do need to stay home and isolate from your dad. He's got asthma and he's older, I'm sure. So do I agree that type 2 diabetes should take a statin? Absolutely. And an ACE inhibitor, Justin. A statin and an ACE inhibitor for people with type 2 diabetes is usually quite helpful. Uh, government isn't busting the dealers anymore. They know who they are and where they are. Kimberly, that is absolutely true. In fact, it's legal to tra in California to, uh, to traffic in a certain amount of drugs. So guess what the dealers do? They traffic in that amount of drug. Mm. Is Prevacid safe? I know Xanax, Zantac is not. Um, Prevacid Kelly is a, what's called a proton pump inhibitor. Wait, am I getting that right? Is Prevacid? No, Prevacid may be an H2. Well, I mean, just I haven't used it in so damn long. Um, Prevacid is a, um, hang on. You're asking the wrong person. Is it H2 antagonist or a pro, it's a proton pump inhibitor, right? Um, okay. Uh, yeah, it's a proton pump inhibitor. Uh, and those are those are very effective. Uh, I'm of the opinion that they should not be used long term unless you have a really significant problem like Barrett's esophagus or you know severe reflux with risk for cancer and you're a smoker and a drinker and that kind of thing. Uh, otherwise, I worry about long-term pr uh, proton pump inhibitors. What I would say is use it for six to eight weeks at a time to get it under control and then switch back to your proton to your H2 antagonist like Pepsid. And then if you have exacerbation, then go back to the Prevacid. Uh, I know personally I get depressed on uh, proton pump inhibitors. Uh, Tammy, it's not fun at all. Five years fighting my way. I'm sure I guess you're talking about um, you're talking about uh, fibromyalgia. Why are people dying from overdose so much lately, Kimberly? I think that's primarily fentanyl, so it's almost impossible to know what you're getting, and so people are getting fentanyl mixed into everything in certain doses that they don't anticipate, and it's very easy to overdose on fentanyl. It's the only opiate that it's easy to overdose on. The other ones are really hard to overdose on. You have to add a benzodiazepine in to get the overdose. Uh, taking metoprolol for high blood pressure, but it's not bringing my BP down, which I asked my doctor, Lindsay, uh, Beta blockers uh, are good medicines, but ask about an ARB, ACE inhibitor, hydrochlorothiazide. Those are more typical first-line drugs. I wonder why the, he didn't, he or she didn't use that for you. What's the link between statins and heart attack? Diane, you know, you, you're leading me into a uh, complicated world. Uh, I've been in a bit, which is the world of fats and and um, and cholesterol metabolism. Um, uh, the bottom line is that LDL seems to figure into most of the, how to say this, but be accurate. There are many aspects to the LDL story. Lowering LDL seems to have a measurable effect on outcome heart disease and heart attack. I've been on a uh, LDL lowering medication for 20 years. My calcium score is zero. Uh, bringing the LDL down, though, is probably not the whole story. Uh, and people may be able to be more targeted in what they're doing with uh, diet management. Uh, the carbohydrate story is clearly figuring into the apolipoprotein piece of the story and the inflammation piece of the, uh, of the uh, cholesterol story. So cutting out carbohydrates will bring your HDL up, may bring your triglycerides down, and that may be more important than the LDL story. So look at Peter Atia's stuff on this. He's very knowledgeable. Um, uh, and, um, uh, Gene, I see you're asking about Jordan Peterson. Uh, I know he's suffering and where our prayers go out to him. Um, I don't want to give specifics on what I would do or not do. Um, cause I know, you know, he's, his family's struggling very hard to help him. <clears throat> uh, did the beta blocker before Lindsay says, um, metoprolol is a beta blocker. Oh, I see. I'll ask for ARB or an ACE inhibitor or hydrochlorothiazide or both. And also, see, but typically we do these for essential hypertension. We use an ARB or an ACE inhibitor with AR being used as one of the more typical first-line drugs or a thiazide, which is cheap and nothing, 
Uh, if your blood pressure isn't under control with either adathiazide or a calcium channel blocker like amlodipine. So the, the three typical drugs for essential hypertension now are ARB or ACE. Uh, people come off ACE somewhat because of the cough. If you're diabetic, the ACE is clearly better. Thiazides, uh, calcium channel blockers. Beta blockers are good. They, they um, Particularly if you have heart disease, they're quite good. Uh, but there's lots of side effects with those. Uh, update on hydroxychloroquine. Um, Dr. Zelenko, I understand, is doing very, very well. He's certainly tweeting his head off out there, um, making his case for hydroxychloroquine. <clears throat> the fool's eye mind today. Um, I'm not quite sure what you're saying, what you're commenting on. I'm curious. Uh, thank you, um, Joseph Miner. I appreciate that. Mm. Let's see, if I don't want to go fast, then go in the opposite and go very slowly. I'm not quite sure what that means. Why not long-term omeprazole? Lori, that is also a proton you pump inhibitor. You do go pretty fast. Uh, that is an, a pro, that's also a proton pump inhibitor, and I want to, uh, as I told you, I don't, I'm not super comfortable with long, but uh, doctors do prescribe it long-term. I, 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 that's my personal position on it. What parts of California are safe from the fires? Um, most areas are safe. Uh, these are not really affecting... Um, inhabited areas so much. It's the smoke and it's the particular... Listen, the reason San Francisco looked so bad yesterday, This here's fake news for you. <laughs> the, the, that story about those pictures of San Francisco were posted as though, oh my God, a fire is going to sweep through San Francisco and destroy it. No. What you were seeing was a meteorological condition that was caused by a high pressure center down here in a low pressure outside Oregon that took the Oregon fire, fire. smoke brought it around the low pressure, and the higher pressure pushed it directly into San Francisco. We covered this on the news yesterday. It's coming so at us, too. It was well, we've got the fire right next door here. That's what's us. But it was not. there were no fires nearby. It was the Oregon fire sweeping down around the low pressure system and being pushed into the San Francisco Bay Area. So guess what? Fake news, everybody. Shocking, isn't it? <laughs> Shocking. Well, sometimes when there's big fires like in Napa, then you'll <clears throat> see it in San Francisco. Correct. But and, I don't and, think they're in Napa right now. They're all in Oregon. Oregon. There was some stuff. There was some stuff in Northern California, but that's not where the smoke was coming from. It was coming from Oregon. Oh, that Oregon. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Uh, what's a nasal fire map, Kimberly? That's interesting. Uh, when is Susan doing another calling out? Um, oh. Anne 20, wants to know. The 21st. 21st of this month? I might do one next the 21st, yeah, with 21st Colby. With Colby, 21st of September. So Kelly Gallagher, thank you show. for asking. Yes, we are quite safe. And Kelly, Kelly, I've been watching you on Twitter lately. You're very good, very good questions and commenting on people's stuff. Very, <laughs> very um, she's a thoughtful, very thoughtful super stuff. Super fan. No, but she's thoughtful. I mean, she's challenging and good in the best possible way. That's, the, that's, that's social media at its best when people ask, use critical reasoning to ask pertinent questions or to raise pertinent issues. I mean, that's, that's what I like to see out there. Um, oh, it's a NASA map. I see. I see. It says nasal fire map, <laughs> <laughs> NASA fire maps. Um, okay. Uh, let me, Susan says I need to slow down, but I, I feel guilty if I slow down because I want to keep up with your, um, well, with you your hop comments. around. It's the only way I can do it. It's the only way I can keep up with it. Uh, why are we so focused on vaccine instead of better treatment for COVID? Tamara, I would say we're focused on both. I, I don't think there's one more than the other. There's there's a lot of resources going in both directions, and the FDA is working very hard. Mm. Okay. So, Sarah Bear, you were asking a very challenging and important question. This is the stuff I like. She says a New York Times article in late August about the high number of positive COVID-19 PCR t uh, tests being linked to the number of cycles being too high. Are PCR tests too sensitive? So this is what Dr. Yo and I were talking about yesterday. So polymerase chain reaction takes a swab. It finds uh, RNA pieces on that swab. It combines them with another complementary piece, and it amplifies that piece, and it amplifies it again and again, and again, and each time there's orders of magnitude more reproductions of those viral particles made, our PCR here in this country that we're using does it 40 times. Most countries, my understanding is, do more like 25 times. And at 40 times, you're going to pick up random pieces of viral RNA that just happen to be circulating around that are not associated with infection, infectivity, or disease. 
And the criteria the state of California has set for reopening are so restrictive be, that we're never going to meet them. And the reason we're never going to meet them is because of this 40 times amplification that we do. And unless we either modify that, maybe 25 times, or start parsing out who's sick and who's not, we'll never open the state of California. Which is why when Dr. Um, Farrar, who's our local county health official here, says things like, well, we have to wait till we're done with the election. She used the word done until we can open schools, suggests to me she, they're not going to allow us to open until they're done with us and force the election. So uh, just unbelievable. Yes, yeah, Sarah Bear, 25 to 30 times would be adequate, I think. You know what? I'm looking at the fire situation. Mm -hmm. So, oops. So the SCU Lightning Complex is the one that's in San Francisco. That's, that's the that's the thing that's... This is San Jose. And then right above it is um, the one that's up on... It's near um, San Francisco. So that's a fire? Yeah. Yeah. So that is part of it. Okay. That is part of it. It's not just... Well, but what, you're also getting the organ smoke, what, what I was told yesterday was that the majority of what you were seeing there... Napa. It's right above Napa. Yeah, I thought there was something in Napa. So it's a pretty good sign. There's always something in Napa. Yeah. Uh, and then here's Oakland and San Francisco. So they're like, they're engulfed by, they're not going to be on fire, but they're definitely surrounded by fire. And then we're down here. Ours aren't as big. The, um, that, those are the biggest one. The one in San Jose is like 396,000 acres. And then that's big. And then the so I take one, back what I said. Yeah. There, I modify what I said. That's okay. Um, you know, you're, because I was told that by meteorologists stuff. yesterday who said the whole thing. Well, no, saying. but there's also that. You were right. But here's I understand it's that bad, but it's not strictly speaking fake news. It's like it's like This is our fire. Our news. fire is very small in comparison, yeah. but it's still really small. Well, show them where Pasadena is. Maybe we're getting... Po po wait, stop. So point at where Pasadena is so they can see. It's just... Mm. Okay, we're right. Wait, no, 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 where's no. that? See where the 126 Oh, that's is? Santa Clara. Sorry, I'm over here. That's our fire, right? There. Oh, that's Redlands. Wait, where is it? Bobcat. Where's the Bobcat? Here I clicked on it. Hmm. Uh, sorry. Susan, some people say they like it when I go fast. I'm okay, sorry. About sorry. That. <laughs> uh, okay. Wow. Uh, Howard Stein, rough man. Congratulations on getting over COVID. Here's, here's uh, our fire. Does right here. Lexapro <laughs> help with depression, anxiety, and panic? Yes, it can. It's so a very crazy. mild medication. Point at where Pasadena is. You can see. I think we're the ones that are getting it from Morgan because look how small this fire is. And we are just. Yeah, but you can go outside and you can see it coming here's right. Red, that's the. Uh, the Redlands fire. Redlands fire. And then our fire is here. And then there's another one in Santa Clarita, but they're not as big as that one up, up in uh, Northern uh, California. Johnny Corey, you're having panic attacks also. Look at the book, a book called Dare. It's called Dare. I want you to get that book. I want you to read it. And I want you to get some psychotherapy. Okay. Uh, oof. Long hauler with fibromyalgia symptoms. Uh, Tammy, look at what Dr. Yo is talking about. He has some therapeutic ideas. And Dr. Patterson has some ideas for treating long haulers. They clearly have continued inflammation, and he thinks he knows how to interfere with that. Uh, uh oh, are, are, are our YouTube comments turned off by mistake? They seem to be because nobody's commenting on YouTube. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. That's a restream problem. It was. It was on, and now it's off. Oh, that's weird. Want me to go on restream and see if I can figure that well, out? Well, no, I'll go on YouTube, tell them to go over to another. Well, maybe just turn it on, see if we can turn it off. On okay, again. let me see what I can find out here. Yeah, Kimberly, it's organs. That I know it's rough up there. there uh, yesterday, I got this thing that said that the restream was having a problem with YouTube. Yeah, Knox, Summer, you ask a great question. Should the health director for 10 million people be a physician? And I told everybody they yes. have to go over to... Now, they do have a clinical director. If the there. chat's not working, head over to facebook.com slash Dr. Drew, and you can get on that chat. Uh, the, Dr. Galley, Christine Galley, is a physician. She's a good physician, and she is in the team with uh, Dr. Ferris, so there's not, like, there's not physician in, input. But yeah, this ability to make major decisions with non-pharmacological interventions that are clearly government or overreach without being able to measure the untoward effects, that's a physician thing. That's how we that's how our minds are trained. And the fact that she's making decisions without any concern, really concern, not really getting the mental health impact, the substance impact, the developmental impact on children, the cognitive impact on children, the emotional development on children. The long-term effects of all of this are being completely ignored other than COVID. And at least they, I'm sure you're, she's thinking about them, 
but not the way she should be. Not nearly with the prioritization that she should be. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I was worried this was going to happen yesterday. I What's that? Oh, the, that, uh, that the chat wouldn't work with um, interface. YouTube? Hmm. Is, Kathy, is CBD safe for teens? That's an interesting question. Uh, later teens, probably, but I, I would... I, again, if you have a later teen that needs something like CBD, I would have a do. full mental health evaluation That's before I did I anything. But do not treat yourself. Do not treat your family until you've had proper medical evaluation. Okay. Yeah, so that's weird. How do I feel about long-term venlafaxine? The only thing I feel about it is be careful getting off of it. That's all. I mean, there's all kinds of theories about when to get off. Um, oh, when you, yeah, when you miss a dose, you get headaches, vertigo. That's the, that's the venlafaxine withdrawal. You can't, you don't miss a dose. But when you, when it does, you're learning that when it does take, come time to get off, you've got to get off slowly. You may want to switch to one of the isomers of venlafaxine. Um, no, I'm blanking on the name. I will get it for you in just a second because it doesn't have those same withdrawal symptoms. Venlafaxine. One second, I will tell you what that is. Um, come on. Dexvenlafaxine is called. So here's everybody on YouTube chatting. Sure, they'll fix the issue. Just give Susan. Yeah, I'm thinking about turning it off and on again. I know I didn't give up on you, Jay. I see you there. See, I just picked you up. What, um, what is he on YouTube? Yeah, they because um, somebody wants to know if Halloween's going to be canceled. Halloween is not going to be canceled. I will put this point again. Who asked that? Go to YouTube. Dot, on a different thing, go to youtube.com slash Dr. Drew. Um, shoot. Oh, here we go. Trying to find the name. I can't remember the, the trade name of this drug. That you, it's out there. Can you find it, Drew? I can't find it. It's right Lots me, of comments right on there, there, but they're not coming through on the re restream. Oh, really? That's yeah, I may turn it off. I don't want to turn off the restream because it'll shut off the YouTube Christy. channel, and then you'll end up with... Um, yeah, nobody else. So, again, the medicine's called Pristique. You may, your doctor may want to switch you, uh, Tori, to Pristique at some point because it's easier to get off of. Um yeah, uh, Gene, I understand getting off clonopin. You need to work with somebody who really knows what they're doing with that. I, I've done it a lot. It's pretty miserable. Uh, tapering, yeah, it, once you get down below one milligram, you, you're going to start having withdrawal symptoms. And you might want to go cold turkey. Just tell your doctor that I, I personally have had, uh, we're talking about coming off clonopin, uh, efficacy with phenobarbital for a couple of months and high doses of uh, gabapentin. Your, your that usually buddy, makes it tolerable. Your buddy Andrew said that California hospitalizations continue to fall dramatically down 202. So yeah, I, I'm past let, two days. Let me look at it right now. I'm looking at. We're that. waiting for to see what would have to happen after the um, holiday. Uh, California hospitalizations were down at September nine and ten. They popped up a little bit today. Deaths are down. They also popped up a little bit, but they're overall down. Oh, here's hospitalizations. I haven't seen today's data yet. Where'd you get that data? Uh, Andrew, I'll find out. Yeah, yeah. We they were on YouTube and then it just went. Uh, so weird. Mm. I didn't do anything. I didn't touch anything. What's happened with monoclonal antibodies? They are being researched and they're quite. They're looking quite good. So if you, again you look at my interviews I did with Dr. Yo, we talk about that in great detail. Um, gabapentin made my compound fracture possible. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Did you fall down or something? Oregon cases downtown. Yeah, generally, we're doing well everywhere. But I think that's why um, Dr. Fauci said we need to honker down. He doesn't want us to all start becoming exuberant that we're doing so well. He wants us to keep doing what we're doing that's making us do so well. And I think that's the way to look at this. How to live with the, with the COVID is what we're trying to do here. And by the way, it should include not being panicky and, not, and, and trying to head towards normal. Normal should be the goal. Normal with mask, with distancing, whatever that is, but normal should be our goal. Um, mm -mm -mm. Yes, Colton, I see what you're saying. I just don't know what, what the gabapentin had to do with it. Uh, so, okay. So, again, we were talking about venlafaxine and the flu like symptoms and the zaps you get, and that's all SSRI withdrawal symptoms, and effects are characteristic for that. You have to get down a very low dose if you're going to try to taper off that. Um, so, Colton, are you saying the gabapentin made you sleepy and you got in a car accident? Is that what the deal was? Uh, 
Hi, Angel, Angelia, Angela, Angela, and it is, thank goodness it is Friday. Susan, are we going to spend our weekend in Orange County? We're going to get out of this hellhole so. that is Los Angeles? I don't know if I don't get too tired. Of <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm to... I don't think, uh, Dale, I don't think the risk of transmission in dental office, we would have heard about it if there were actually substantial risk. I don't think there's risk. Dentists are being very, very careful about this, much as hair salons are, and I'm seeing no transmission. So people should not be screwed up, so, so uh, upset about that. Happens with Cymbalta, Kimberly. It happens with anything that has SSRI. It can happen with we can, with uh, Celexa characteristically. It can happen with Zoloft. It happens with Venlafaxine very much. Uh, so uh, I think what, uh, okay, Young Betten, whatever your name is, uh, I think what Fauci meant by hunkering down oh, sorry. is to keep the course and not get complacent. I agree with you, Jangar. Uh, why are we hearing myself? In Sorry, I'm on Periscope. I'm getting the link. Ah. Uh, um, it does remind me about UVCC, everybody. Uh, look, okay, so Halloween is not going to be canceled. That is insane. And if they cancel it, civil disobedience. Let's be clear. Let's, let's, Oops, let's have rational recovery and let's yeah. have civil disobedience. And one of the things you can do with the stuff that kids are handling, you can uh, go get a UVC light and just hold it over the bag for a minute and, uh, and mix it around and hold it over the bag again or put the light in the bag. Uh, UVC light is very effective. You can get that at um, redhotmedicalproducts.com. 3,000 milligrams of uh, gabapentin give you side effects. I can see that. That's high dose. Okay, I just sent the Periscope link for all you anti-Facebookers over so you can ask questions there. Okay, I was just about to wrap things up, so I'm going to give the... the well, uh, there, can you see those questions, Drew? Uh... I mean, they're asking a gazillion questions, and I've already told them we can't see them. I'm sorry, I don't mean well, to Well, let's, let's go down. Let's go through them. Uh, let's go to the top. Can you see? Um, well, people with prominence in the medicine are high. Uh, Mark, I can't. It's cut off at the side, so I can't see the whole question. Can you can you move it over a little bit? <laughs> yeah. Does Hold the on light? One oh, shoot. Hold on one second. got to move it. It's a totally different. Am I'm I still depressed? David's here. asking, am I still depressed? Um, yeah, a little bit. I, I, I'm 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 not as bad as I was, but a little bit. Um, I, I was bad, I'd say. In fact, I was not good. I'm gonna zoom in too, so you can. Uh, two thousand of gabapentin. Yeah, and well, if you're not having withdrawal symptoms, Colton, two thousand gabapentin sounds like a lot. Okay. okay. What? Uh, how do you deal with a recovering addict who switched to heavy marijuana use? Um, BHO, uh, talk to his or her sponsor. That's not a recovering person anymore. Uh, thoughts on prominence in medicine aren't mentioning the high age of mortality when interviewed on the major news networks. That's right, Mark, because they need to maintain the panic porn. And if they don't toe the line of the panic porn, they won't be asked back on the shows. And be clear, when you're a guest on news outlets, you are not paid, never paid. News are not allowed to pay guests. Right. They pay contributors and they pay anchors and they pay reporters. They do not pay guests. So people are are going on those shows to promote themselves or something, and so they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be towing the line. Andrew says, uh, "See life for week up to fifth is at one point eight percent for ER visit. That puts us to remember two thousand nineteen levels." Andrew Oshkazvili, I would also say that if you look at uh, excess mortality, according to Dr. Levitt, we are below fourteen percent fourteen percent below our usual weekly mortality rates for this time of the year. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go so fast, Susan. I'm just going up a little bit. Uh, is it best to wait until October for the flu shot? No, get it now. Uh, <laughs> we we want to get it going early this year since the, we're expecting a flu. You know, with the, we're wearing our masks and things so we can transmit this thing readily. Um, ugh. Anxiety. Everybody's I know. 10-year-old ten year old had anxiety before the pandemic. Worse now. Of course it's worse now. We that have poor to do child. a show on anxiety. Okay, let's do it. Uh, our poor, that poor that child. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, that child, get get that child a, an adolescent, a, a child psychiatrist, uh, just to sort of, a, a child therapist. Doctor Oz's say. people want us to do that. Okay, let's do it. I'm I'm up for it. Um, have you watched the Social Dilemma on Netflix? I'm a therapist who works with internet gaming addiction. Would love to chat sometime. Uh, happily, mental we health bar. Last night. We watched it last night. We couldn't get through it. We were too depressed by it. We, <laughs> well, we were, I was tired too. Well, well, we had trouble getting through it. I mean, it was it it it. it Rang true. Uh, I'm familiar with most of the stuff there. Uh, I know that they're just uh, reporting what is accurately there, and it's awful. 
It is awful, particularly this political time. You get to see the comment um, when it, Alvin said, can your producers stop interrupting? <laughs> oh, boy. Somebody came to my defense. Thank you, Flora May Bunny. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at your comments again. I'm sorry that I'm lo not looking at the camera. I was freaking out a little bit because I want you YouTubers to get your questions answered. I'm doing whoa, my best. Whoa, Susan, whoa, whoa, whoa. There wasn't any. Uh, Mark, oh, uh, should Halloween be canceled? No. Just keep your keep them keep a mask on under the masks you're wearing and distance and have a have a good time. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna yeah. go to the bottom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jay wants to fl fluid bond with me. <laughs> you understand what that means, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, uh, Jay. Uh, one day you can tell us about China Australia trip. Uh, sure. Yeah. We what do you want to know? <laughs> We're happy to talk about that it. That was five, almost five years ago. Oh my God. I know we haven't had another big vacation. Since we got it's time. We were supposed to do it this summer, and uh, we had our life taken away from us by all this. That's right. We have another. We'll be back. Uh, how do you know the difference between common flu and COVID? It's very difficult to tell. That's why we do testing for these things. Uh, when I had H one N one, I it was I was surprised. That's what I ended up coming back with. Okay, stop. Levitt's prediction from March is Andrew are coming more and more true. Yes, yes, Andrew Ashkazvili. Uh, and by the way, am I pronouncing your name right? I've been saying it that way for quite some Sounds time. You better me. correct me if not. I, I wouldn't try it. Um, and yeah, I think we should be listening. To, we should be listening to people who are predicting accurately. Now they may not predict all the time, and they may not stay accurate. But uh, Dr. Levitt, um, there's a great interview with him with Dr. Professor Michael Levitt on Unheard. Go to YouTube.com. Unheard, Dr. Michael Levitt. He's a Nobel Prize winner who is looking at this outbreak in a certain fashion, and he thinks we're sort of on the other side of things right now. So uh, you got verified on YouTube, and you don't even have 100,000 viewers. Uh, what's Congratulations, that? Congratulations, Drew. Al Alakashvili. Al okay, I'm getting and close. Then they, and then they shut off your uh, restream. <laughs> That's interesting. It doesn't mean anything. You have to complain to somebody. Uh, the Vapist is giving advice on who to block. Uh, let me see here. So, uh, hold on a second. I'm going to switch over to restream now. Somebody had a question about pills and stuff. I'm sorry. I lost your question. It looked like a good question to me. Mm, hold on. High platelet count, Jessica, you're waiting to see a hematologist. Not likely to be your lithium and Prozac. I, I would say no. Uh, I mean, it's any always can be medication. Anything can be medication, let's face it. Ah, so uh, the fool's eye mind today says, I do use pot, but mainly no, mainly for no pain pills or Xanax. Um, so you're on replacement. Uh, you're using cannabis to deal with a more serious addiction, which was pain pills and Xanax. And I have no objection to that, but I wouldn't call yourself sober. I would say I'm, I'm on replacement therapy and I'm managing with cannabis. That's fine. You don't have to be sober. Uh, that it, you, you have to decide what your goals are for your particular case and what are realistic for your case. And as I've said, and I will always say, I would much rather have somebody on cannabis than opiates, and particularly opiates and benzodiazepines. And having somebody on cannabis can be, I, I have put people on cannabis and left them on cannabis. Uh, and I have switched people to cannabis and then taken them off and tried to go for sobriety. So I'm not, uh, I don't pass judgment on any of these things. Uh, I, I, it's all just trying to improve people's lives. Uh, uh, uh. Somebody wants to know if you'll liaise, liaise with Dr. Zelenko and inform the FDA hydroxychloroquine, zinc, and erythromycin is a successful treatment. I, I have no ability to do that, though. I do occasionally talk to Secretary Azar, and I absolutely would bring that up. My first, I would have three questions for Azar. What's going on with Laurel and the Mab? Why is it taking so long? Two, what's going on with the vaccines, really? And then I would bring up the uh, this as well. Uh, Levitt was canceled for saying this was at this at the beginning of the pandemic after watching Wuhan in China. Canceling of scientific discourse is the most disgusting piece of this whole experience. Scientific discourse must be open, liberal, outrageous at times. We, we would have no th uh, special theory of relativity. We would literally not have a special theory of relativity today. Einstein would have been canceled. Absolutely. And by the way, when he came back around, what was the, with, with the Copenhagen uh, synthesis? That would have been canceled. So let's be realistic about where we are in this discourse, everybody. Stop it. Stop canceling people. <laughs> <sighs> All right, well, I'm going to wrap this up. Unless down. it's Netflix.
Yeah. Uh, family member hospital for three weeks, two weeks incubated, still no visitors said unless he's dying. Well, yeah, live. Uh, unfortunately, that is how they're doing it with COVID right now. Make sure that that he is getting your loved one is getting access to any of the research medication. Again, I will refer you to Dr. Yo, who's got a good job, a good does a good job of helping people uh, navigate through that stuff. If you're at the end of, end of the line with COVID, you should be getting some of the research uh, monoclonal antibodies. You should just definitely be getting convalescent plasma. You should be, uh, I mean, people can argue about IL-6 inhibitors. I know there's been some data on that that's not looking so good. But uh, I would want to get Laurent the map myself if I were at that, in that condition. So counting paranormal, great minds think alike. She says, what about having Halloween earlier in the sunlight? Which was Susan's idea too, which I thought was a it's great not raining idea. Or snowing, it's a great think. idea. If you if you want to mitigate your risks of trick or treating, do it in the UV light. Yeah, do, do it. it before it gets dark. It's mitigate your risks. Do it. Be sensible, but don't cancel. Yeah, that's all I'm saying, everybody. I trust you. I trust and you to be smart light human beings. And swipe your it government, the bag. your government does not trust you. That's <laughs> the bottom line here. They do not trust you. Put all your candy in the sunlight. Or swipe a UV light over Right, it. you can leave the candy out for a couple of days if you want. You can swipe UV lights over Wash it. your hands. A lot of ways to do this. Be smart. Be sensible. Yes, we'll be circulating more. And yes, that will... That will I mean, uh, they're kids. They're going to... They need to have Halloween. Go oh, on. my God. It, it just, it's just unthinkable what we're doing here. I remember when there was an ice storm in New York and they had to cancel Halloween for all the kids. It was so sad. Of all the... in the in, Up in the East... Um, Everything was frozen, and they it had to be the oh. next weekend. Uh, Eric they Anderson. Still had it. Eric Anderson is uh, wondering about cancel Netflix. Uh, I have two thoughts on that. Netflix has been a sanctimonious, self righteous organization, and of course, they've been canceling other people. And eventually, you will get canceled too. You're not immune. The guillotines are up for everybody. Study your French Revolution if you want to know how this works. Everybody goes up. The people that are putting people up eventually go up themselves. My son how, used to work there. How it works. Now, the uh, these the the particular movie in question about uh, essentially nine to eleven year old dancers, I watched the video yesterday and I was disgusted was not the feeling horrified horrified that they made nine year olds do the dance I was watching. Forget that it was a movie. Forget that it was meant to be outrageous. That they had nine year old actresses do that thing. I, I, cancel, cancel everybody. That's it. That was it was child pornography, and then put it on their platform. What would you do with a child pornographer? What would you do with them? Creepy. It was. I, I don't recommend you watch it. I, I haven't really seen it. I saw a couple of pictures of some girls. It it they looked like they were kissing or something. Oh, that wasn't the part. I'm I know. I'm telling I, you. I saw some other vi clips too. The dance was just out of control. Hey, Facebook is back on my restream. Look at that. Oh, good. There Me it too. is. I complained to somebody. Maybe they fixed it. Uh, yeah, canceling is just a fancy name for censorship. You're right. It's it's burning of the books. That's what we're doing. But we, if if we're going to be burning the books, <laughs> this this movie deserves deserves to be a part of it. And by the way, as, all, as well as the movie reviewers that defended it as intending to make us uh, uncomfortable with this outrageous material, they there are young girls that did this yeah. for them for to make us uncomfortable. Do CGI or something if you want to do that. It's upsetting. Somebody said for me to take a deep breath before the weekend. <laughs> I agree really with that. Mad. I'm getting all upset here. We're going to have Alex Michelson on Tuesday. Oh, good. He'll be very happy. Yeah, I already set that up because he, last night he got you all fired up and he just yeah. planted the seed. I loved it. Yeah. You, you guys are getting some rhythm now. That's on. Uh, we're gonna see. We're gonna have him on Tuesday, and on Monday we're gonna have Tyrus back, and he's gonna bring. Oops, he's gonna be bring one of his um, his uh, wrestling buddies. Oh, good. Hey, and Richard, I didn't get canceled for critiquing Hillary's injury. And oh yeah, I did. I critiqued Hil Hillary's doctor's choices for medication. I wasn't critiquing Hillary. I wasn't saying anything about her illnesses, which were very serious and are very serious. I was critiquing the physicians because she released her medical record. I was critique, critiquing what the doctors were doing. And yes, I got canceled for that. And then that the post my... took off with it. And then, and then no, your no, show no, got it was, canceled. It was, and they said it was you were Drudge. Canceled. It was Drudge report. You were canceled they... because of it. The show was already canceled. And then you got censored by CNN. We couldn't talk about it for a year. So here we are now. So you can explain yourself. 
Now, Andrew Oshkazvili, um, what do you think of Scott Atlas? Um, I see that tweet he put out, and I'm interested in what that meant as well. But I think I'm going to be doing a little symposium with him. Uh, and so I'm curious on your thoughts on, on uh, I think he's, I think he's good. I think, I think. Uh, why can't I liaise with uh, Zelenko? Because I, I'm just not in that position. I, I, I just don't. I, I will happily, if, if I get in there, I, I try to go to Washington and, and make a difference there. I try to do stuff there. But, you know, if you so much as dare trot, you know, enter the, the administration currently, you somehow are radioactive. <laughs> I, and, and I'm interested in making a difference. And there's a federal government sitting there that's willing to do something. So I'm willing to talk. Right. Talk to you them. never got invited by Obama. so well, We did once. Remember, we went. We did. We did for that HIV. Um, yeah. We did go there. Well, uh, and and we were invited once by the Bush administration. I'll go with I'll go for any administration if if right. they're willing to go. If, even Biden. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. I would. I would. If not we even, not, I would happily. We're not if that's who's there. Partisan to any. Yeah. We just want to help. Uh, and get our questions answered. Get your questions answered. Okay, I think we got to wrap it up. Uh, thank you all. Uh, we've almost gone. Tired. For, yeah, and it's also one fifteen. I, I got to get going. Okay. Um. So we thank you. We uh, Alana, you didn't tell me where you were in Scotland. We have been to Scotland, Alana. We've been all over Scotland, actually. We stayed in the Highlands at the Eagles. What was that place called? Eagles Nest? Eagles, Susan? Um, Eagles, Eagles Nest, yeah. No, something no. Like that. Eagles something resort. And uh, we've been to uh, we've been to all your major cities. I we, love Scotland. We, love, you know, we, really had a nice we went fishing Scotland. there. It was fun. Also, yeah. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Hydrolite. Uh, use the code Dr. Drew 25. It's cut off in the picture. Get 25% off and get your hydrolyte. Yeah. And do, do, uh, please support the people who support us. It, it allows us to keep doing these things and it, it's not, it's not zero cost to do all this. So pr please help us. And we've got the and better life recovery. And we, and we do choose our sponsors very, very, very carefully. So we, we, we want to make sure that, uh, these are quality products. It's and recovery for them. men. In Orange County. Yes. Uh, and then also AMFM, which is a, a mission for Michael, which is a Orange County mental health facility. Right. And I've spoken to the medical directors of both facilities. Very, very good. Very well done. have any problems? Yesterday, a woman was on and said, gosh, it's funny that you have a, a mental health thing. My son saw somebody on TikTok oh, shoot themselves. I and know. I heard about And really this. freaked out. And we couldn't answer Ugh. a question because we were really, you know, invested in Dr. Yeo's conversation. But um, stuff like that is horrific, you know? Yeah, I mean, we should do a show on social, you know, on maybe on that uh, Netflix show about social media. It was like know? seven or something. We can get a social media expert maybe in her. I don't know if she's here today, but I'm sorry we couldn't get to her question yesterday. Um, I'm still not seeing where in Scotland you are. Uh, Glen Eagles is what Glen Eagles, called. that was the name of the place. Thank you. Um, Glen Eagles was the, and that was beautiful up there in the Highlands. Amazing. Uh, okay, well, she's not going to tell me where she is in Scotland. I was like, sort of. She doesn't want us to find her. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, she might be asleep now. It's kind of late there. Yeah, GSR. Apparently, that's what happened on TikTok. And we, we, it's just Glasgow. You're in Glasgow. We were up there. We went there. And uh, beautiful city, beautiful, lovely people. Man. Uh, have I been to Germany? Yeah, I love Germany. I, I love the whole Germanic region. Um, Susan is sort of Austrian descent. And uh, I've been kind to, of, sort well, of. because you're Czech. I mean, that's sort of Austrian. I, if you look back in my history, I'm you're German, very Austrian. You're, you're German adjacent. Uh, German and, um, and Czech and Austrian. And, uh, Austrian. yeah, I've been to Salzburg. I've been to Vienna. I've been to Frankfurt. I've been to, I've not been to Berlin. I would like to go to Berlin. Our kids no, have spent time in Berlin. Know. So We're going back to Prague, too. We are going back to Prague soon, sooner than later, I think, if we can get um, get normalcy restored. <laughs> so we need a rational revolution, and we need a uh, fight for normalcy. There we go, everybody. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, on uh, next Friday, look for me at your mom's house live. This is a apparently a spectacular event. Uh, they keep telling me over there at your mom's house that I'm going to be... Uh, Sorry, you guys. I'm going to be uh, devastated by what they show me. You will get to see a special uh, I did with uh, Josh Potter where I did a little operation on his back and uh, Tom was unable to look at that. So I finally brought something in that will make Tom and Christina cringe. And then uh, you have the Dr. Drew After Dark and episode after 83. Dark. You've done 83. It's amazing. That's crazy. And you're still going. 
It, it's been a real pleasure to do that that pod with those guys. They're they're great, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to your mom's house live. I trust those guys, and you get to see me uh, being horrified. And if you want to see me <laughs> horrified and and uh, you know hiding my face a lot, both from the stimulus and from being seen, that's sort of the reaction I get. Uh, you, I'm sure there will be lots of that there at your mom's house next Friday at five o'clock Pacific time. Uh, I guess you sign up for that. We can put just up. look up your mom's house live and it will go. Yeah, we should have a, uh, thank you, Flora May. We like doing the show. Uh, yes, we will be talking to Robert Paul champagne on that show. We will be, he will be, he's one of the other guests on the show as well. So oh, RPC will be very there. Exciting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we will express our well, love. I will him. definitely be on another planet cause I'm afraid to see it. Mm. <laughs> Maybe you should cut you. You were uh, you were there when I was very first exposed to these guys. When we went to their house, yes. I'm like, "What? What's this podcast yes. about? Yes. Try it out. Try it out, Jay." Yeah, but then they're gonna they're gonna make fun of me too. So it's true. How dare you think they're making fun of me? <laughs> Rational revolution, GSR. That's what we want. We want critical reasoning back. We want pragmatism back. That is our goal. All right. We'll see you guys. Are we gonna do anything over the weekend? Do you think? I don't know. So I may might take a couple of days off. Yeah, I think we probably will. We're, we hit uh, our quota this week. Did we? I don't know. We're, uh, we're we might do one over the weekend, so kind of uh, look out no, for the... No, I don't know. Look but we will be back Monday with Tyrus and his buddy, and then we'll be here Tuesday, and then we'll be here Wednesday, and also on Thursday. So And uh, football is back this week, and I have a feeling football is going to be very therapeutic for us. I, I can feel it when I watch it. It helps my mood. So if you're a football fan, it would be nice to have some of that back. Um, and I think um, we will not compete with that. How about that? We'll probably take this weekend off. Uh, they'll, they'll look out for the blasts in case we just happen to get a wild hair. And need Everybody to get on, on Facebook and Periscope, go over to YouTube channel and subscribe. Even if you don't watch it there, just give us a little boost it, in it our helps subscribership. Us. And then, you know, we we really appreciate everybody who's over there and uh, on Facebook and on Periscope. It's, but we're, we're on all three platforms. It's and YouTube that's going to get us our international reach. And I would love this community to be more international so we can really... And the YouTube people are helping us get new guests. We, we are so domesticated and provincial here in this country. Wouldn't you want to also get some input and have a community with the international input? I think Well, here's what nice. I like. I like that if, if you're on Facebook and something happens on Facebook, you can go over to YouTube. Right. Vice versa, just right. in case, you know, because we don't want to... We don't... Sometimes, technically, the restream go, is off or... I don't know. There's always something, so... Thank you, GSR. I see you. I see I, all your comments here. And thank you, Revolution1117. Make it a rational revolution. Uh, and uh, hashtag winning. And we will see you all, hopefully over the weekend, but definitely on Monday with Tyrus. Bye-bye. <sighs> Bye. With so much focus on keeping ourselves and our loved ones safe and healthy, it's easy to forget that most of us are going to experience things like allergies, colds, possibly even the flu. So reminding you, proper hydration is crucial for all of these things. Remember, even slight dehydration can make you feel like you're getting sick, and none of us need that anxiety right now, that's for sure. That's where Hydrolyte comes in. Longtime fans will remember my obsession with Hydrolyte, which is simply the best oral rehydration product I've tried. I'm even more excited to introduce their brand new single serve powder sticks. Simply pour one powder stick into a glass of water. They recommend seven ounces. The powder dissolves almost instantly, creating the perfect balance of sodium, glucose, and water. Delivers up to four times the electrolytes of your typical sports drink. The other great news about Hydrolyte's new powder sticks, they're 100% all natural, no artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. They're available in flavors like orange and lemonade, and they taste great. Hydration is crucial, and Hydrolyte is fastest and easiest way to stay ahead of it. Get your supply of Hydrolyte powder sticks now at hydrolyte.com slash drdrew. Again, that's h-y-d-r-a-l-y-t-e dot com slash drdrew, and then use that code Dr. Drew 25 at checkout.